I'm going to experiment today with some gifts that I got this past December. A fan of the website sent me some Banatons. These are a cane, it's a cane basket that you use to let the bread dough rise in. It's called proofing. The idea being, there's two things that my research found. One is that it gives the finished bread when it's baked out, you turn it out to bake it. It gives the finished bread a more of an artisanal bread look to it. And supposedly the caning and the flour that will be putting inside will wick off a little bit of the moisture on the outside of the bread dough, which is good if you're using a very moist dough. Because a moist dough, you put it on your baking sheet and just kind of bleh, flattens out and you have a flat bread. Supposedly the wicking off of that moisture will help the dough to hold its shape better when you turn it out before baking it. I got to give it a try. So first thing I need to do is to prepare my bannetons for the dough. First thing I want to do is to prepare the bannetons. I sprayed this with a little bit of uh, water. Not much. You just kind of want to mist it to get a little bit damp. I did that over the sink. And you want to dump a lot of flour in there and then just start moving it around to coat the inside of that banneton. Like so. Right over the top edge because the flour, the dough rather, is going to go over that top edge. And then I don't know how much you shake out. I'm just going to kind of tap it out. And that looks pretty decent. Okay, that looks good. I have the other one to do next. So there are my bannetons. I think these are ready. I'm going to put those aside. And next, I'm going to start mixing my dough. If you're wondering what this is for, this is a pad so I don't hear noise. See, that's all nice and quiet. So I'm going to mix my dough. I have 900 grams, which is about two pounds of bread flour. That's roughly six and a third cups by volume. If you figure five ounces per cup, um, when it comes to baking, I do things by weight now because I get so much better. And this is bread flour. I'm going to put half of the bread flour in there right now. And the other half is sitting in here. And then I'm going to add one tablespoon of active dry yeast. That's right there. Two teaspoons of salt. If you like a saltier bread, you can go up to a tablespoon. I don't like it too salty. And then I'm going to mix that up pretty well. This is a dough hook, a hand dough hook that someone from Italy sent me. I get um, gifts sometimes from fans of my cooking videos or my website. Okay, get that mixed up. And then what I have is 600 grams, which is roughly two and a half cups of water. And this is at room temperature. It doesn't have to be warmed up. I used to always warm it up, but um, is it Paul Hollywood, who's a well-known bread baker? He said, you don't need to warm the water. It's going to do its thing. The yeast is going to do its thing. Get that mixed up. And by the way, these are available on Amazon. Okay. So there's my starter. That's my batter. I can next move this to my stand mixer. This, by the way, is a really simple formula for bread. It's just four ingredients, flour, water, salt, and yeast. I believe, if I read correctly, I do a lot of research when I'm researching for my recipes. I believe there's a law in France that says you cannot call French bread French bread unless it's made only with these four ingredients. People in France would know that. I don't. I live in America. Okay. I'm going to work in the remainder of my flour and what I'm looking for is a dough that'll be moist, more moist than I'm used to seeing. 
So I want to see a lot of sticking in the bowl because I want to test those bannetons to see how well they do wick moisture away from the outside of the dough while it's rising. My flour and water, and etc., has all come together into a dough ball now. I scraped the bowl down a couple of times to get everything incorporated. It's a very rough looking dough ball, so I'm, I need next to knead this. I'm going to do it in the machine for about eight to ten minutes. I finished my kneading, and I got to tell you, I dumped quite a bit of water in there. I mean, not like two or three cups, but several tablespoons to get the dough the way I wanted it, the moisture that I want. That's the thing with baking bread is that from one bag of flour to another, you don't know how each uh, kind of flour is going to behave. I bought this flour this week. I buy it at Costco. I buy the 25-pound bag because it's only $5 currently, $5.59 for 25 pounds. A one-pound loaf of bread cost me 25 cents if I make it myself. Okay, um, going back to the formula, again, this is a really simple bread. If you want a different kind of flavor, you could put rosemary in there to make a rosemary loaf. You could put olives in there to make an olive loaf. There's a lot of different things you can do for making bread. I wanted to just make the simplest kind of bread right now to test my bannetons. Okay, I'm going to let this rise now. I'm going to take out my dough hook. You can see how sticky that is. That's what I want. A nice, moist, sticky dough. I'm not even going to clean up the, um, the bowl. I'm just going to let it rise in the bowl because a, um, a video I saw someone did. That's what he did. He just let it rise in the bowl without even cleaning the bowl out. This is going to take one to two hours to rise. I want it to see. I want to see a dough come up to close to the top of this bowl. I'm going to cover it with plastic wrap. My favorite place for letting dough rise is on top of my computer in my office because that's where it's very warm. My bread dough now is just coming up to the plastic. It's touching right there. So I can pull this off. If it tears, it doesn't matter because I'm going to punch it all down anyways. Look how sticky that is. But that's what I want. One of the videos I saw, the guy said, wet your hand and you can prevent that sticking. I'm gonna try that. That works. It works very well. Okay. Turn that out onto the counter. Okay, the bowl looks empty enough. And I'm really gonna punch that down a lot to get the air out of it. Okay. Cut it in half. And then if it doesn't stick too bad. I'm going to push this down in there and One of the directions I saw I said to press it down in there really, really well. And that's filling that up more than I want it to. Okay. And then the other one, same thing. Press it in there. And again, I'm going to cover these and let those rise a little longer. You might be wondering what this is. I wanted the dough to rise outward, to expand outward, to fill this banneton really well. It was an experiment, and it's so far, it looks great. came out perfect. I did butter the top of these so that this wouldn't stick this time. So that's one loaf. 
Here's the other that grows quite a bit more than I was expecting it to. But that's all right. And this, by the way, is the bottom because that's where all the weird stuff is. Now, I lined a baking sheet with parchment paper. If all goes according to plan, this should just plop out with hardly any sticking. And it didn't come out nicely. That one didn't come out nicely. Let's try this one. That one came out better. All right. I heated my oven to 425 degrees. And I'm going to bake these for probably 40 minutes because I have two loaves here to bake. Here is my bread out of the oven. And I have to say I'm quite pleased with it, despite the little problem I had over here with getting the um, bread out of that banneton. It looks fine now. <laughs> the biggest issue is right here where the two loaves of bread kind of grew together, which I'm okay with. That's not a big deal. Okay, I'm going to transfer these to that cooling rack to let these loaves cool down. So there they are now. They're cooling. One thing I could have done that would have given them even more of an artisan look is slit the top of the loaves before they went into the oven. But that's fine. I mean, look how pretty those loaves are now. And see the, those circles that spiraling the marks on top. That's what the look you want when you're using Benetons. These have had a chance to cool down a little bit, but they're not completely cool because, well, two things. One, I'm hungry. And two, is I want to see what this looks like inside. Well, listen to that crust. Crisp. <laughs> Look at that. That looks beautiful. That's really nice. It did flatten out more than I wanted it to, but that's okay. Okay, I'm going to butter this piece and then see what it tastes like. All right, let's see what this tastes like. I think what pleases me most about this is it's a very simple white bread, the most basic you can get. Flour, water, salt, yeast. Crisp crust. Mmm. That's good. Okay, excuse me. Let's see, it's mid-afternoon. I'm going to go enjoy my afternoon snack. To view the recipe and download a PDF version with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com.